1987 model year cars will dominate our activities this year. It is a major technical change and will need all of us to work together to make this happen and to achieve the program. So that you have a good understanding of everything we are trying to do, I have asked Bernard Preston to take you through all the changes we are making. Thank you, Dick. Many of you must be asking why we're making this significant technical change on 87 model year cars following all the changes we have made recently. Let me explain. First, we have to meet the new European exhaust emission standards for cars registered from the 1st of October 1986. And this applies to all our main European markets. Next, we have to make our cars more competitive in a rapidly changing marketplace, with advanced features appearing on both large and small cars, we have to keep in step with what other manufacturers are doing. Most luxury cars now include features like anti-lock braking systems, memory seats, and fuel-injected engines. Finally, if we're to meet our production targets consistently, we have to simplify our build procedures, which in turn will improve reliability. So now let us look at the changes which will occur on cars other than Corniche and Bentley Turbo. And for simplicity, we will describe the changes in the order in which the car is built. The first major change is that all engines become fuel injected. And the rationalization across the whole range of engines has reduced the number of parts by more than 600. These fuel-injected engines not only meet the new legislation for exhaust emissions, but are 22% more powerful and use less fuel. The bearing shells are now all standardized, and the bearing caps are secured using set screws. There are new lower friction pistons which contribute to improve fuel economy, and the new stiffer cylinder head is simplified and has round inlet ports to improve the inlet charge. The induction manifold is a compact single tier design and has separate water galleries. Airflow to the engine is controlled through this induction throttle body. The new manifold has spherical seating clamps. We have also commonized the front end auxiliaries as far as possible. These include the new cast remote oil filter, a new power-assisted steering pump, a lighter sand and compressor, and a higher output Delco alternator. At the back of the engine, we are fitting a smaller, lighter, but far more powerful starter motor. On top of the engine, there will be a new VDO cruise control system, and a diagnostic plug to aid fault finding and general servicing requirements. And finally, the new gearbox features a deeper sump, which is designed to prevent service failures. In addition to the changes in the engine, we have introduced a new air silencer, which lets the engine breathe more easily. And all the cars will now be fitted with an oil cooler as standard. We have also made changes to the body, which improves the airflow to the new aluminium radiator matrix, giving greatly improved engine cooling performance. And to complement the new inlet system, there is a free flow exhaust 
secured with these new rubber mounts. On the fuel side, a pre-pump is now fitted in the fuel tank. Finally, axle ratios have been changed to help both fuel economy and reduce noise. Anti-lock brakes are now fitted to cars supplied to all markets except the USA, Japan and Australia. They will not be fitted to core niche cars at the present. The anti-lock brake pressure modulator is mounted adjacent to the left-hand spring pot and the electronic control for the anti-lock system is mounted inside the left-hand rear wing. The sensors which measure whether the wheel is about to lock are located on each hub. Wear indicators are now also fitted to the brakes. Whilst on the fascia panel, there is a new warning light which includes brake pad wear and anti-lock. The present height control mechanism, incorporating two in-series valves, is now replaced by a single height control valve system. This revised hydraulic system is fed from new twin reservoirs which retain the current filling nozzles. There is now a very neat stowage compartment for mineral oil in the boot. You may also be interested to know that many of the brackets are supplied by Vickers pressings. Inside the car, new front seats will be fitted to all cars other than Corniche and Bentley Turbo R. The new seats have a slimmer style to improve both comfort and lateral support. There is also a new head restraint, which has a positive manual adjustment. The new seat is mounted on an eight-way mechanism, which incorporates power rake and the ability to memorize preferred seat positions. These are the new seat and memory switches installed. The seat switch is in the shape of a seat, so its operation is easily understood. It can be memorized using the memory switches which are mounted rearwards of the seat switch. An additional beam has been fitted in the body on which the new seat is mounted. Finally, we have improved the comfort of the driver's and passenger's seat belt by reducing friction in the mechanism. We have made changes to the air conditioning, which improves performance and simplifies manufacture. The new servo has only seven components, compared to over 300 for the current electromechanical unit. This is the new fan speed module, which is now positioned on the engine side of the bulkhead. As a further refinement, the ACU water tap now becomes electrically operated and the four-row evaporator is replaced by a new six-row unit which gives much improved ACU performance in hotter climates. We have also made a lot of detailed changes to the electrical system. First of all, the battery is relocated on all cars with consequent body and trim changes. The wiring looms are now constructed using thin wall wiring and therefore use less space. At the same time, a new range of connectors are introduced which lock together to prevent inadvertent disconnection. 200 electrical connections have been eliminated on each car. An example of this are the tow board plugs and sockets which have been eliminated by a loom which passes through the bulkhead. There is now one right hand and one left hand main distribution loom, which is common to both four door cars and Corniche. Although it looks similar, the fuse board is new, and to improve reliability, all the riveted connections are now eliminated. Within the doors, new window motors have an integral thermal cutout and a modified gearbox. The boot unlock switch in the glove box now becomes a selector. The customer may choose to lock and unlock the boot using the door controls 
or use his key to manually unlock the boot. This switch provides considerably more convenience for the customer. Now let's look at some of the new external features. First of all, the body is cut away to accept a new attractive air dam. On USA cars, the chin section is slimmer to give greater ground clearance. As well as the air dam, seven new paint colors are added to the range. We have also developed some new features for the Corniche, which is now fitted with the 410i engine. It is 14% more powerful than the current Solex engine and uses less fuel. There is a new external oil cooler mounted in the front wing. The radiator is made from aluminium with plastic header and bottom tanks, and there is a new engine fan. At the back of the car, the power hood motor and pump are repositioned, and a new fuel sender unit is fitted in the fuel tank. Next, a most important change. The key cut latch, which has been so successful on Silver Spirit Series cars, will now be fitted to Corniche. This will require changes to the body panels and to the solenoid and linkage. Finally on Corniche, to meet European laws governing the radii of exposed components, several other changes are made. For example, the mascot becomes a retracting type. There is a modified trim strip round the hood waist rail and a modified hood frame. So far, we have talked about Silver Spirit, Silver Spur, Bentley 8 and Corniche. So what's new for the Bentley Turbo R? Firstly, it has a new turbo engine called 410IT, which incorporates electronic fuel injection and boost control system. Not only do 87 model year turbo cars meet the new legislation, but they're 10% more powerful and give an 18% improvement in fuel consumption. Some further technical changes have also been incorporated on the Turbo R. For example, a split B-bank exhaust manifold is used to help reduce exhaust back pressure. The 410IT engine includes a sophisticated digital ignition system with twin Bosch distributors and twin coils mounted on the body. At the back of the engine, there is a shrunk on timing and starter ring. Here you can see the inductive trigger for the engine timing system. Inside the car, there are new sports style seats and new head restraints. These seats will be unique to the Turbo R and will help to differentiate between the Rolls-Royce and Bentley Marks. I'm sure you'll agree they look good. And with the new seatbelt covers, present a very attractive and sporty appearance. Once in the driving seat of the Turbo R, the owner will appreciate a new sports steering wheel, adding to the improved appearance of the car's interior. Externally, the new Turbo R air dam is restyled to be deeper and more impressive. That concludes our look at the improvements on all the cars in our range. But as you can see, it will be quite an undertaking to achieve a smooth changeover. In the final part of this program, I would now like to give you some idea of the size of the job in hand. Let us first of all compare the number of new parts being introduced on 87 model year cars with past projects. In 1976, Silver Shadow 2 introduced 1,700 new parts, many of which were launched on Corniche six months earlier. Then in 1979, fuel-injected USA cars involved 350 new parts. In 1980, when we launched Silver Spirit, we introduced 4,500 new parts. Later still, 85 model year cars included 600 new parts. 
and now right up to date, 87 model year introduces 2,600 new parts. So next to the launch of Silver Spirit in 1980, the 1987 model year launch represents a very significant technical change and will be the greatest challenge we have faced in recent years. To help introduce all these new parts and changes, we decided to launch the car in three phases. This starts with one pre-production car being mounted in mid-February and a further 14 pre-production cars being mounted in April and early May. Following the pre-production cars, the 87 model year cars for sales are mounted in early June at one per week, rising to 59 per week by year end. Turbo R comes next in June, followed by four-door non-American cars and Corniche at the end of August. And finally, USA, Japanese and Australian specification cars are mounted in early November. All this time, we are gradually phasing out the current car. The combined mount program starts at a higher mount rate of 59 cars, then dips in the second half of the year as the changeover of cars takes place. So what progress have we made to date? Well, at the end of January 1986, engineering had released 87% of all the new parts required. By the same time, 76% of all the tool making had been completed. 47% of new bought out parts had been received and 22% of crew made parts were in the stores. We're on target to meet the deadlines that have been established and I hope you recognize the degree of change and the task which faces us all in 1986. It's crucial that we meet our targets so let's all pull together to get the job done.